Hi everybody, thanks for pressing play on my video today. It's great to have you watching. It's Caroline here from craftycarolinecreates.blogspot.co.uk. Got something a little bit different for you today. Um, it is what I think is a really cute little gift box. How beautiful does that look? I think this would be perfect for giving any small gift. Um, I think anybody would be quite excited to see what was inside here. It would also be pretty good probably for um, wedding favours, etc. Or even giving away a really tiny piece of cake. Really beautiful, really simple box. I, I will show you how we make it. I'll pop that there. Can you see that? Mm, just about. Okay, I'm going to start with two pieces of cardstock. One for the lid and one for the box itself. The lid piece um, measures four and nine sixteenths of an inch. So that is the first sixteenth after the half. Um, that's on both sides and the second piece for the base of the box is seven and a half square, seven and a half inches square. As always, full imperial and metric measurements will be all from my blog, so pop over and take a look at those. We're going to very simply score um, the base on all four sides at two and a half inches. So I'm just going to score down at two and a half inches, rotate it 90 degrees and do two and a half inches again. Turn it once more, two and a half inches, and a final time, two and a half inches. Okay, the lid piece we are going to score at one inch on all four sides, so just the same one inch, rotate it by 90 degrees, score it at one inch, rotate it by 90 degrees, score it at one inch, and rotate it again 90 degrees, um, and score it at one inch very very simple okay that's all our scoring done so we'll pop the scoreboard away and we'll start making up our boxes okay first thing we are going to do is bring in the bone folder and we're just going to score and burnish along each of those score lines that we have made on both the lid and the box oh i'm not very good at picking paper up off the table i need to um, get a mat or something to work on to to help me with that, or maybe grow fingernails a bit longer. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to start building up both the base um, and the top of the box. So I'm going to bring in my scissors and we are just going to cut up um, these score lines we've just made. So what we've basically got is a three by three grid and on each side we're going to cut up opposing score lines. So we get something like this. You can use a scorer if you want to be your um, trimmer, if you want to be really um, efficient on these, well not efficient, but um, really precise on these cuts. So all I'm doing is now I've cut up, I'm just notching out each of those corner flaps now. Just like that. There we go, perfect. And then we are going to cut each of those approximately in half. This just helps with the bulk when you make your box up um, and just makes it a little bit more of a professional finish. So that's the base done. Just do exactly the same with the top. But in this case, I'd recommend notching out, but you don't need to trim down each of the corners. So just notch those out. Notch out, notch out again. Okay, perfect. Okay, we'll build up the lid quickly so you can see how that happens. I'm going to use some fuse. I'm just going to put fuse on each of the four um, corner tabs. I am getting better at this. I think it is just a case of practice making perfect. So I'm just putting a bit, a strip of fuse down the middle of each of these. You could use Tombow or Sticky Strip or... Um, something along those lines and then we're just going to fold this box up the box lid up um, just like this there we go beautiful okay let's just put that to one side while we work on our um, box itself this one you can see I've decorated it using um, the Papillion Potpourri stamp set from Stamping Up which is a beautiful collection of six butterfly stamps 
probably one of the first stamp sets I ever bought and it probably remains my most used actually. I'm going to use this emblem again. It is torn on torn stamping so this box is um, wild wasabi purposes, purposes and I've stamped it in purposes. This is um, smoky slate so I'm going to stamp again in smoky slate. mount that on my clear block, ink up your stamp and we need to stamp on each of these four full sections that we have remaining and you want to keep in the lower sort of half of your box so that when you have the lid coming on you can still see the butterflies and I've just done sort of two offset like that. So we will stamp up, we will ink up our stamp and then just stamp two on each side. I find it easier if you rotate it and then it kind of helps you to make sure that you are getting this, the butterflies the right way up. I have done this in practice and ended up with up, upside down butterflies. So I would recommend avoiding that if you can. Okay, while I've got the stamp set out, I'm also going to bring in a, a scrap of Whisper White cardstock. I'm just going to stamp um, one little butterfly on there like that. Mm, it's not showing up that well in this light. We can see that butterfly there. Okay, we put that away and we can now start making up our box just exactly the same way as we did the lid. So I'm just going to use Fuse once more along each of my boxes here. And then we're just going to fold that up very simply. Sorry, going off camera a bit there. Oh. There. It's easier than I'm making it look. Just fold that up beautifully like that. And you can see that our lid, using the measurements I gave you, fits perfectly on top of the box. Just going to embellish it with this little butterfly. What I'm going to take is a, a, one of those scrap corners that I, I cut up earlier. I'm going to use that to punch out um, a, a larger butterfly. You see it just about fits there. This is using the larger butterfly punch, which obviously coordinates brilliantly with the Papillion Potpourri set. And then the little butterfly that we stamped earlier, we are going to punch him out as well. going to use a glue dot to attach those on top of each other. So taking, I find it easier to pop the, the glue dot on the larger monochrome butterfly that you popped out. And then pop the little butterfly on top and just fold up the wings a little bit. So it kind of looks as if it's just landed on top of that bigger one. Okay. Then I use um, some rhinestones just along the body of the butterfly just to give a little bit of bling. Who doesn't like bling? They're not coming up. There's a little strip of three there. There we go. Have I got them? Nope. Just about. So pop those along the body of the butterfly just to give a little bit of, of bling. Can you see there? And then I'm just going to use a second glue dot to attach that to one of the corners of the box, just like that. So it just looks, oh, if the glue dot hadn't come off. So it just looks like the butterflies just touched down on the corner of your box there. Finally, going to use a little bit of ribbon to tie it closed and also to give that lovely, I think it just looks so lovely and elegant. Again, some smoky slate ribbon here. Going to trim off about as much as you think you will need. I do love this chevron ribbon. I'm absolutely stocking up on it now that I know it is retiring and it is on at such a great price. So just wrapping the ribbon around the second half of the box. Just off, I like to off-center it. I think it looks really great um, off-centered. 
And if you watch my videos, I'm always a great fan of flat knots rather than bores because they are much easier to tie. And in this ribbon, I think they look just as effective as a bore would. So just pull that up, pull that through. And I just push that round a little bit, put the knot a bit more centre. There we go. Trim off those edges of our ribbon. Okay, tidy some of this rubbish away and you can see those two lovely boxes that I think anybody would be excited to receive a gift in. Thanks for watching. Do head over to my blog and let me know what you think. See you soon. Bye bye.